Hey. Hello there. How are we? Incredibly well. I couldn't be better. Uh, for everyone who's joining, I just want to say uh, welcome to episode two of Hot by the Fireside. Where the questions are hot, amusing, and entertaining, I hope. My guest this evening, as you can see, is Andrew Porter. You may not be aware, but I've known him since prepubescence. We have grown since then, of course, in terms of stature, some more than others. Uh, since then, he has gone to earn 37 caps for Leinster, apologies, 37 caps for Ireland, 73 caps for Leinster. He has won the Heineken Cup, the Six Nations Championship, and has a Grand Slam squeezed tightly under his proverbial belt. And Porter, I'm going to refer to him as Porter because that's how I know him. Uh, I'm not like Thank a schoolmaster who refers to people by their second name, in case you find that strange. Is that okay with you, Porter? That is perfectly fine with you, So I knew, I knew you, uh, Andrew Porter, would go far in your rugby career when uh, rather like the crunching jaws of the Lestragonians in Homer's The Odyssey, I observed in awe as after eating the meat from a bucket of chicken wings, he started nibbling on the bones. A man who would crunches be chicken off, wings. Yes, a man who crunches chicken wings with such fervor, such tenacity, is in the words of synth master William Onyabor, a fantastic man. Now, welcome Andrew <laughs> Porter, welcome all, and please in the comments give a resounding thumbs up to this fantastic man, Andrew Porter. Thanks Andrew very Porter, much, Andrew, Daddy. How are you? No, psyched to be on Hot by the Fireside. And, and we are all here at Hot by the Fireside are absolutely delighted to have you here. Um, so basically, if no one really knows what this is, I'll be asking Porter a series of questions and we'll uh, dig deep into, uh, into what he's all about with a, with a bucket and a spade. So to kick things off, I just want to introduce the first question uh, with a mutation of some lines by Flan O'Brien. When things go wrong and will not come right, though you do the best you can, when life looks black as the hour of night, a pint of porter is your only man. Now, Andrew Porter, what is the finest stout according to you? Uh, it's hard to beat a pint of Guinness now, Charlie. I remember when my dad took me to the rugby games when I was younger. I was running around when I was five and was nicking people's pints of Guinness, so that's where it started. Wait, you were nicking pints of Guinness age five? I was. <laughs> now, that is my, uh, my passion for Guinness grew from there. That's brilliant. See, I, I'm a little bit uh, tormented by this because um, I have lots of family members from Cork and they would say the glorious mud of the River Lee, Murphy's or Beamish. Would, would, uh, have you ever tried these other alternatives? Uh, no, no. Uh, no, it's, it's muck compared to Guinness. Oh, okay. And I, we'll quote you on that. Uh, <laughs> now, so I can see there, uh, you're, well, you're a man of um, incredible haircuts. So um, I've, had a few, I've had a few dodgy ones in the past, and I'm not sure if this is uh, helping my case, really. So uh, it's going for kind of the, the Viking kind of look, but I'll, uh, I'll leave that up to imp interpretation. You may know from my, our schooling that I'm a huge Eminem fan, and the peroxide blonde is always good in my books. Um, I, think it, I think it would suit you now. Yeah, see, I, I have to give a shout out to my roommate and barber. I haven't got a professional haircut in, in uh, over a year and a half. So my good friend Jack Balberni, barber extraordinaire, gave me this rather good mullet, uh, which I've been parading around. Yeah, I'd back to cut my hair. Like. Yeah, he, uh, we, we were kind of thinking about trimming and then said, ah, come on, get out the old buzzer. Um, what, like, what would you describe your current? You say it's a Viking uh, on on match days. It's, I would almost. It looks like a kind of smooth wave. It's smooth wave, but the scrum cap kind of makes it a bit wild. I guess I look a bit insane with the scrum cap. It looks like I'm about to go on fucking WWE or something. <laughs> hey, that could be a, a future career, my friend. It could uh, be. It could be life after I don't know yet, like. What would if you were in WWE? What would your finisher be? <laughs> Uh, Would it be akin to Porter the Undertaker? Power, like, Porter the Porter Powerhouse, where you lift them 
high into the air and crash them down onto the mat. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, the, uh, I was going to ask, well, I, I actually had a whole thing pre prepared on the history of the mullet. Did you know it, it was originally called the Kentucky Waterfall? No, I didn't, actually. Well, I think... Well, uh, it's a new day now. Yeah, well, we always push that on Hot by the Fireside. We want to encourage people to take away some things from this, uh, these conversations. Um, so the next, the next question I wanted to ask was in, in the kind of ritual that comes around initiation, uh, players are often, when they get their first cap or when they, yeah, when they get their first cap, they're asked to sing a song. Could you tell me what, what was your song? Uh, it was Lamb Down Under by Men at Work. Ah, I actually, uh, I don't quite know that song. By any chance, could you give us a few bars? I knew you were going to do this to me. <laughs> I think I'll scare the dog away. Oh, the All dog. Right. <sighs> Need to loosen myself up. Travelling in a fried out combi On a hippie trail, hit full of zombies I met a strange lady, she made me nervous She took me in and gave me breakfast as she said, do you come from a land down under? Women go and they plunder. Can you hear, can you hear that thunder? You better run, you better take cover. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen, audience, give us a round of applause. Give us a resounding two thumbs up for that. Uh, that I say, I say we might have lost a few, we might have lost a few audience members after, after hearing me do that. I know our audience members have uh, has doubled since you shared that, uh, that Australian <laughs> pop classic. Um, thank you for that. that You're was, welcome. Uh, you, would you like to share an A B with a song of your choice? Uh, I, well, listen, now you're asking. You may be aware I lived in Hong Kong for a while where I became an extreme karaoke enthusiast. And what I would do would do uh, Without Me by Eminem, which would kind of scare the audience. They, and, 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 uh, and they'd be like, whoa, this guy's hard. Whoa, whoa, look at this guy. And then I would hit them with Can't Help Falling in Love by Elvis, a crooning anthem. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a baptism of fire with that. Like you're not really you're not really easing them in. You should start the other way around. Maybe that's better. Yeah. But anyway, I'll, I, wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love. That you got the dog pulling uh, back anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, so going for, now, you you are a heavily tattooed man, and I Took am me, a yeah. I am a smooth man, so to speak. Smooth uh, skin, innocent. So my body <laughs> for you is a blank <laughs> canvas, uh, and I you you are given uh, a, 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 the needle, and and you can put whatever you want wherever you want, where are you putting it, and what are you tattooing upon uh, my body, the blank canvas? Oh, I think it might have to be like the Steve-O one. With oh, just did the, your, your face all over your back, just like this. <laughs> my face? Your face. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it is good to blow your own trumpet every once in a while. You can put me in your back. <laughs> We scare uh, a lot of people away of that, though. We could agree that if I got my face upon my back, you could also get my face on your back. Deal. I go for that. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Let's make it happen. But you've, uh, in fact, actually, I, speaking because um, you yourself uh, are a bit, of, a bit of an artist. You're a. Uh, uh, I actually, I have, I have a pencil case. Uh, that you have uh, drawn on still, and I can't wait to sell it at auction. <laughs> <laughs> Why not make much money off that now? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. Bit of a self yes. And I also want to mention, because you did a, a great thing where, um, well, in the words of Roger McGough, if you write a poem, you're a poet. Same thing if you write a, if you um, paint, you're a painter. And you, you are indeed a fashion designer now, but you've uh, designed masks. Could you tell us about me. that? Uh, yeah, I started, I drew up a few designs for the Irish Cancer Society uh, for face masks. And yeah, they're on sale at the moment on the Irish Cancer Society website. And here's one now. 
Whoa! Designed by me. That's there great. we go. Doesn't quite fit the beard in though. I need I need to make one for the bearded gentleman, like, <laughs> like a huge or the, or the bearded like, lady, what have you? Like a large kind of a. Uh... Like the, like the thing that they put on horses' faces when, when they're bag. eating. Yeah, feed It's like bag. a feed bag. Yeah. People design feed bags. Multi-purpose. <laughs> Protects you and feeds you at all the same time. Yes, and uh, that's brilliant. So we'll, um, and we'll give that another shout-out at the end to go to uh, Irish Cancer Society website. But now I've prepared a bit of a quiz for you. Okay. Okay, let's and, do it. And uh, if we were in person, I would bring you over to a stool, but we are not. Uh and it's called The Stool of Hard Rock, okay? So I'm going to read some lyrics, then give you three options, and you have to guess which band wrote these lyrics or artists. Okay, let's do it. Number one, I push my fingers into my eyes. It's the only thing that slowly stops the ache, but it's made of all the things I have to take. <laughs> Jesus, it never ends. It works its way inside if the pain goes on. Is it A, Tears for Fears, B, Joni Mitchell, or C, Slipknot? It is Duality by Slipknot. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Tears for Fears or Joni Mitchell quite uh, um, get into the kind of gouging imagery. <laughs> um, now, question two, here we have it. Something's wrong. Shut the light. Heavy thoughts tonight. And they aren't of Snow White. Dreams of war. Dreams of liars. Dreams of dragon's fire. And of things that will bite. Yeah. Is it A, Paul Simon? <laughs> B, Metallica? Or C, Gwen Stefani? That is B, Enter Sandman by Metallica. Indeed. I wanted to say as well that... um. I know you're a big uh, heavy slash death metal fan, and uh, you, you must be you you if if there was a lab of like technicians or scientists wanting to invent the the body type for a mosher, they'd probably set you as the benchmark. <laughs> uh, yes, I've been in a few, and uh, Metallica was one in Slane Castle. So uh, yeah, it was quite enjoyable. The, the size quite helps. I'd say. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if people can see uh, on the camera, but I've got kind of a lean frame and uh, I find myself wobbling around like one of those noodle men outside a car wash. <laughs> <laughs> Getting tossed around the place. Next time we, I go to a death metal gig, I'll stand beside you as a kind of ballast. Anyway, <laughs> question three. Girl, I'm on a mission to cure my condition. Because without your kissing... My heart's just a prison. I'm hoping and wishing that girl I'm forgiven. Say yeah, yeah. Because every time you leave me, I'm sad. The moment you're returning, I'm glad. So let's not go forgetting what we have because it's bad, so damn bad, yeah. Is it A, corn, B, Black Sabbath, or C, Ronan Keating? You kind of stumped me on that. I'm going to have to go with C. I think it's Ronan Keating. It is C, Ronan Keating. Oh, okay. And I, I don't know if you're aware, but he uses the rhyme scheme A, 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 which is not common in uh, in, in poetry. Uh, but it, he really pulled it off. He's the bard of Bayside, after all. <laughs> um, so now, and this is the thing I also wanted, just so people can uh, uh, get some recommendations. Say if a monster... A strange monster from outer space arrives and says, Hello there, Andrew Porter. I hear there's some great stuff going on in heavy metal music at the moment. <laughs> what what are your top three tracks? Um it's hard to kind of narrow it down to a few tracks. Like oh if it was before before a game I'd listen to Amon and Mark. Uh they're a nice they're from Norway. Mm. Uh can't beat Metallica or Megadeth as well. So <laughs> Megadeth. That's, my, that's my, uh, my top three kind of at the moment. Brilliant. I was going to say yeah, Megadeth, you know, they, they kind of, they do what they say on the tin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, uh, the next question now is you, you were, you were, you had a dog on camera there. I do. He's, where is he? Pablo. Pablo. There you go. This is Pablo. 
<laughs> he's he's heavy. <laughs> oh, God. So this is Pablo. Uh, if Pablo. I was to communicate in some way with Pablo, uh, would I go, Rorf? <laughs> Rorf? Perhaps no. Uh, he doesn't quite understand <laughs> no. the technology. But sorry, what kind of dog is this, Porter? Is he's, it an old Bora? he's an old English bulldog. Ah, an old English bulldog. And why Pablo? Pablo Escobar. Oh, you're a fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was actually, I, I fell off my bike recently. Uh, and as I was dusting myself down, I had a, 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 a light brown corduroy jacket. And a, a, I have a bit of a beard now, but a thick mustache. And a, a, a few locals screamed at me, Pablo Escobar. They thought I looked like him. <laughs> it, it, you could pass as doppelganger like. I think I just might. If they're casting yeah. a new uh, new series of Narcos, I'm sure they'll uh, perhaps consider me. Add um, a few more shows and then maybe. So just on the topic of dogs as well, um, Michael D. Higgins, our, our president, he's a big fan of yours, I hear. Uh, do, you have any, do you have any words for him on his 80th birthday? Uh, a big happy birthday to, uh, on, to Sir on Michael D. Higgins. Um. Yeah, what's what's his handshake like? It's firm, quite firm for uh, for a man of his stature. Like, yeah, wow. Yeah, I suppose he's got good practice. He's, it, you're, he's, he's got, like you know those squeezy grip things. He's probably doing I'd say that he's all been doing that for weeks on end, coming up to games. Like, I say he's going spare with no games on, like he, with no one in the stands. Like. Yeah, big time. And sorry, yeah, uh, uh, again, he got a new dog recently, so he has two dogs, Mishnock and Brode. So perhaps they can play in the in the gardens of uh, Oris Nukturon with uh, Pablo, <laughs> with Pablo. Um, I may I didn't mention this now, but I referenced a bicycle, so people could have guessed. I am actually in Amsterdam. An Amsterdamian. Uh, I am an An Amsterdamian. Yes, indeed. And I wanted to, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask, have you been here? Uh, I have indeed. Yes, I was there two years ago. Yeah. I went with, uh, me and my girlfriend Elaine went there and uh, yeah, it was brilliant. What Loved did you get up to? Did you have huge buckets of chips smothered in mayonnaise? Um, I can't really remember the chips now. I was, we uh, we did dabble in all of uh, what Amsterdam had to offer. So it was uh, uh, a few mementos taken home from, from Amsterdam. And yeah, we really went in Rome. You'll have to visit because I'm planning a, a, a great mustard tour of the Benelux. And I, I uh, it kind of leads me into my next question, where because you are such a barbecue enthusiast, uh, what is your favorite condiment? I don't like, I don't dislike any condiment. I, they're kind of all the same. Like they all have their own unique kind of tanginess and the with the the creaminess of a mayonnaise, you know. But like, it's hard to beat a good barbecue sauce. Eh? Yes. Yes, and, um, on, a, on a nice bit of meat. Like it's, would you marinate that? that marinate? Meat? See, I haven't really, I haven't got patience to marinate it. I haven't got the patience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just want to, I just want to eat it. I jump back to the Lestragonians of Homer's Odyssey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you see the meat. Who has time to marinate? Um, fantastic. Yeah, I remember when I had, I had breakfast, breakfast with you recently, and, uh, and you ordered an eggs Benedict, uh, but you added six extra eggs and the, the waitress had to go to the kitchen to ask if this was allowed, which it was. And it reminded me of that lion's tea advert where, um, where he's, uh, uh, what's he say? He says, uh, I said to me, personal, personal trainer, put on more weights. And he said, there are no more. <laughs> uh, but I have to say that you eating the, that eight egg eggs Benedict was one of the most inspiring things I've ever seen. They have to go down to the shops, I think, to get more. Like, yeah. Do you get this a lot? Like, would you always uh, add to a meal? Yes, I'd have to. Yeah, that's have, to be, have to be two steaks going to a restaurant, or yeah, the eight <laughs> eggs, like like you said. So, uh, it's it, it mounts up like the bill. So, ah, uh, yeah. But look at you, look at you. You're beautiful. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm kind of going uh, slightly tangentially here, but um. Have you ever ridden a horse? I actually have. I used to ride a ho horses a lot when I was younger. Uh -huh. Yeah, my Where dad. Where did you ride them? Uh, we have like cousins down the country, so 
uh, they always threw me up on one. So my dad was big into them. So like it's it's something that not a lot of people would like think. Be like, if I were one now, I'd probably break it. <laughs> you would need a you would need a certain stallion from Turkmenistan, perhaps. <laughs> I would need one of, one of the Budweiser horses, one of the big big ones. I like. yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I went horse riding recently enough, and someone said, "You must, you must be calm. For as as you ride the horse, the horse can feel your fear." Yeah, um, they feed off your energy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's quite it's fascinating and terrifying at the same time. I, I rode a horse in Fuxing in China, and they were fed on Connolly's Red Mills. Can't be uh, direct. This isn't a sponsored post. We are not sponsored in <laughs> any way by Connolly's so Red, Mills. Red Mills. Uh. Um, but wow, yeah, Connolly's went all the way, went all the way. So um, now this is a question I ask to all guests on Hot by the Fireside. Um, and it's a bit of a classic. Would you rather everything you eat is tepid baked beans or everything you drink is tepid gravy? That's a tough one because I like I like eating baked beans cold. Oh well, this, um, oh is that the problem here that you, you don't want it tepid? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have it room temperature, please? <laughs> um, I don't know. I like my food. I'd say tepid gravy. I like. I, I wouldn't mind tepid gravy. Like if you if you're on the touchline, you've just you've just scrummed down in the seventy eighth minute. You're like, oh god, I'm so thirsty, and you squirt a bit of water into your mouth. <laughs> and it's gravy. Maybe that would get you going. I don't know. It probably would. Um, so uh, there's a few questions now. My, my uh, a good friend, John Connolly, uh, in no connection to Connolly's Red Mills, um, he, he asked, would you ever consider a move to uh, Munster? He's from Limerick. Uh, no. No. Cool. Okay. I don't think uh, so. Would be, well, uh, considering your, your, your stout preference doesn't really attest to that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they'd like me very much after, after saying that now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could do that now. So I, I uh, when I played, uh, by the way, everyone in the audience, I have actually tackled uh, Andrew Porter. Uh, we were twelve, uh, and I actually got him to the ground. So <laughs> I don't know if you remember that, Porter. I only tell people that once a day. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to say, just I, I was never in the scrum. But it, do people do this? Like, what is the strangest thing an opposition player has ever whispered in your ear in the scrum? What is it? I've had a few, a few times. Like, there's like you come up against a few kind of odd characters now, but because it made like, me think of um, there was a player we used to play for CUS who would just incessantly quote Lord of the Rings. I he remember would, that he he would fly into rooks and go for Rohan. <laughs> I I remember that. If this guy's in the comments, he's a cool guy. I want to hang out with that guy. <laughs> uh, he's weird. But yeah, is there any is there any of chat in the scrum? There's there's usually a bit of like shy talk going on, but like, uh, I can't I can't remember anything off the top of my head to be honest. Like it's, it's like I can I can barely remember what I did five minutes ago to be honest. Like it's... you were here with me talking about death metal. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so there's a uh, we're coming down to the last few questions here. This is flown by, incredible. We're getting um, hot right before I said. Yeah, Porter, it's customary for all guests to, um, to uh, when you say hot, you lick uh, your index finger and then tss, so we say hot. Tss. <laughs> yes. Um, so, and I was just going to finish. Sometimes I consider, you're a prop, I, di I didn't actually mention that, but sometimes I consider the scrum as like a big muscly cheese board <laughs> with all its individual uh, uh, distinct positions. They all form different cheeses. So if so, the props, what kind of cheese would they be on this great muscular cheese board? Uh, blue cheese. Is that because of the smell? Yeah. The smell and strong taste, probably. Yes, gusto. Gusto. Um, and uh, so, okay, blue cheese, yeah. I, I, maybe the hooker Most would be Most likely like... the smell, I'd say, though. Oh, yeah, that's one thing. Does it get incredibly smelly? Yes. <laughs> in one word yes um, I'm just trying not to pass out most of the time <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good way to, yeah that's a good way to um, 
to approach it, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so, so this is just a small thing that uh, personally, I would love if you could put in a good word for me. You know, the guy that says, let's see those Leinster flags, Leinster fans. Uh, when he retires, just like, can you put me forward for the job? Definitely. I think like you're, yeah, definitely well suited for it. You've got the voice, the enunciation. Oh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, but so, I mean, that, 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 that is, we've wind down towards the end. That is the last question I planned for you. Mm, Andrew drama. Porter, you are without a doubt the hottest prop to ever come on Hot by the Fireside uh, oh, no, on, I, I, on I our second know. episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much and again just if you want to give a, 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 a shout out to the uh, to the face masks that you've uh, designed and where yeah, we can yeah. get them yeah just uh, head on over to Irish Cancer Society website and you can buy your own Andrew Porter designed face mask uh, all proceeds go into Irish Cancer Society that is great stuff and I'm certainly going to go on and get one for myself now uh, I hope they deliver to the Netherlands they um, definitely do but in no time, Porter, uh, you'll be flying over here and we'll be eating mustard uh, with <laughs> extreme gusto and possibly sharing a nice cheese board. Uh, but thank you that. so much for coming on. Thanks as for ever. Me. As William Onyabor, synth master extraordinaire, would call you, you are a fantastic man. This <laughs> has been Hot by the Fireside. Keep it sizzling. <laughs> <laughs> bye Thanks, bye, guys. Porter. Cheers, Charlie.